Hello everybody, I'm Dan Fullerton and in today's lesson we're going to talk about mirrors. Our objectives include utilizing ray tracing to determine whether an image from a planar spherical mirror is real or virtual, upright or inverted, enlarged or reduced in size, and we're also going to utilize the mirror equation to relate object distance, image distance, image size, object size, and focal length. So let's dive right in and talk about mirrors. When you look at a flat plane mirror, you see a reflection or an image of an object. We've all done this before. The light rays from the object reach the plane mirror and they're reflected to the, re to the observer, creating an image. Now the image is known as a virtual image because the reflected rays don't actually pass through the image. Um, you can't project a virtual image onto a device, onto a screen, for example. Now, all virtual images are upright and they have a negative image distance. The magnitude of image distance is equal to the magnitude of object distance in a plane mirror. They're the same. Therefore, the image appears the same size as the object in a plane mirror. Let's take a look at a ray tracing exercise for the plane mirror. The distance from the object to the mirror is the object distance, which we'll call DO. The distance from the image to the mirror is the image distance, we'll call that DI. And the magnification of the image is determined from the image height and the object heights. So I'm going to try and do some ray tracing here, best I can. If we have our object down here, where are we going to see our image? Well, the way this works is I'm going to try and find a point roughly halfway in between. and light rays from here go up there and then they get reflected to the eye. And from this end of our object, our light rays also bounce off. Angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. And if I do this right, looks kind of like that. And then what we find is if we extend these lines, if I do this correctly, hopefully we get our image over here where this height is the image height that should be the same distance from the mirror, DO compared to DI, and we can find the, mag the uh, magnification from M equals minus the image distance over the object distance, which is also equal to the image height divided by the object height. So there's our basic equations for a plane mirror. Now, there's a little bit more to the story. Let's take a look at some sample problems. A student stands two meters in front of a vertical plane mirror. As the student walks toward the mirror, the image does what? Well, decrease in magnification and remain virtual. No, magnification remains the same in a plane mirror. Well, that eliminates B there as well. Remains the same, magnification, and remains virtual. Yeah, that has to be the answer. The image stays behind the reflecting surface, and the magnification of a plane mirror is always going to be 1. Let's take a look at another example. Which diagram best represents image I, which is formed by placing object O in front of a plane mirror? Well, we're going to have an exact reflection, so that can't be 1. Ah, 2 is looking pretty promising. 3, nope, that's uh, not right. That's not a mirror image. And 4, that's not a mirror image either. So our best answer here must be 2. Well, we can also have spherical mirrors. Those are mirrors that are shaped like spheres, or at least portions of spheres. The inner surface of a spherical concave mirror is reflective. We call these converging mirrors. And the outer surface of a spherical convex mirror is reflective. These are called diverging mirrors. Now, the focal point of a spherical mirror is half its radius of curvature. So the focal point, the focal length, is going to be the radius divided by 2. Let's take a look at how this looks with ray tracing for a concave spherical mirror. Light rays coming into a mirror parallel to the principal axis are reflected from the plane of the mirror and converge through the mirror's focal point. Well, let's try drawing that in blue. So we'll make a note here that this is going to be blue, little dot, and let's see. What we have here is if we have a light ray coming into a mirror parallel to the principal axis, it's reflected from the plane of the mirror and it converges through the mirror's focal point. So let's bring this one in from our 
object, draw it parallel to the principal axis. And if we do that, it's going to reflect back at a 90, at the, pardon me, it's going to reflect at the same angle of incidence that it came in and it's going to go through the focal point. So that should look kind of like that. There's our first ray. Now light rays passing through the center of curvature are reflected back through the center of curvature. So that, let's draw here in pink, through the center of curvature. Well, if we want to find the center of curvature, that's going to be twice the focal point. So if that's a couple centimeters there, let's say that that's roughly over here to our center of curvature. So what we would see is this ray, as we draw it, goes down, strikes the mirror, or where the mirror would go, and then it's going to come back. And finally, let's take a look at our third ray. We'll draw that in green. Light rays from the object passing directly through the focal point are reflected back parallel to the principal's ax principal axis, kind of the inverse of this first rule for light rays. So this one goes through the focal point on the way in. Let's draw that. And it's reflected parallel to the principal axis on the way out. And you notice that all three rays converge at the same point. That's where we're going to have our image. So our image is going to look like that in this case. There's our image. Notice that it's real and it is inverted. We have a real inverted image. So there's our ray tracing exercise for a concave spherical mirror. Well, we can also describe these quantitatively by looking at the mirror equation. It relates focal distance, object distance, and image distance. The object and image distances are positive on the reflecting side of the mirror and negative on the non-reflective side. 1 over f, 1 over the focal length, is 1 over the object distance plus 1 over the image distance. Or if you want an easy way to remember this, this was given to me by another physics teacher, Mike Palin. If I do, I die. Okay, kind of morbid, but help you remember that formula. If I do, I die. Okay, let's take a look at a concave mirror now with the object inside the focal length. Here's our object, it's inside the focal point. What's gonna happen? How do we ray trace this? Well, the reflected rays are gonna diverge on the reflective side of the mirror, so to find the image, we're gonna have to extend the real reflected rays back through the mirror onto the non-reflective side. Yeah, that's quite a mouthful, huh? Let's do it and see what happens. For our first ray, let's start here at our object. Let's draw one that's parallel to the principal axis, and it should get reflected back through the focal point. Like that. Now for our next one, let's go from our focal point through our object, gets reflected back parallel to the principal axis. So we could draw one that way too. And notice that they're not converging on this side of the mirror, they're diverging. So we're gonna have to extend these to the other side of the mirror. So let's extend this one first. And we have our blue one to extend as well. And here's where they cross, where they converge. That means what we're going to have here, if I draw in my image, there it is. We have an upright virtual image. The convergence of these extended rays is what leads us to this upright virtual image. So that's what happens with the concave mirror when the object is inside that focal point. Let's do a couple examples here. An incident light ray travels parallel to the principal axis of a concave spherical mirror. After reflecting from the mirror, the light ray will travel through the mirror's focal point. Oh, absolutely. That's one of our rules for drawing these, re these rays, this ray tracing. Light rays parallel to the principal axis are reflected through the mirror's focal point. How about convex spherical mirrors, though? 
Well, light rays coming into a mirror parallel to the principal axis are reflected away from the principal axis on a virtual line connecting the point of contact with the mirror plane and the focal point on the non-reflecting side of the mirror. This will be easier to show than it is to understand in words. Light rays striking the center of the mirror are reflected at the same angle, of course, and light rays never converge on the reflective side of a convex mirror. So convex mirrors can only produce virtual images that are upright and reduced in size. Let's take a look here. If we have our object in a convex mirror over here on the right, let's do our ray tracing. Our first ray, we're going to draw parallel to the principal axis. So let's see if we can't do that here. And it's going to be reflected like this. But I'm going to extend that back so that it passes through the focal point there. So there's our first ray. Now our second ray, I'm going to draw as if it's going to hit where this crosses the principal axis. And it gets reflected at the same angle. Angle of incidence equals angle of reflection, the law of reflection. So hopefully I drew that remotely close. And if we extend this line, you can see where these are going to converge. The virtual lines converge over here. So we would have an image, a virtual image, that is upright over there. The image is virtual and it is upright. So let's do a sample problem here with diverging rays. Which optical device causes parallel light rays to diverge? Well, we've got a couple choices here, but the convex mirrors are also known as diverging mirrors for exactly that reason. They cause parallel light rays to diverge. How about one with focal length? The radius of curvature of a spherical mirror is 20 centimeters. If an object is set 15 centimeters from the mirror, what is the focal length of the mirror? Well, focal length is half the radius of the mirror, so that'll be 20 centimeters divided by 2, or 10 centimeters. All right, another problem. An object arrow is placed in front of a concave mirror having center of curvature C and focal point F. Which diagram best shows the location of point I, the image of the tip of the object arrow? Is the image real or virtual, upright or inverted? Well, let's take a look. Which one of these has the right ray tracing for a concave mirror? Well, this one doesn't look right. We're not going to go through like that. No, 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 that can't be it. Oh, this is just a mess. This looks better. Now we've got a light ray that's coming in parallel through the focal length. And we've got the one through the center of curvature that just keeps going. Three has to be the right ray tracing diagram. Now it's a concave mirror. If our object is here, our image is over there. Well, it's upright. It's magnified. And it must be virtual. The light rays don't actually converge at our image. All right. A candle is placed 0.24 meters in front of a converging mirror that has a focal length of 0.12 meters. How far from the mirror is the image of the candle located? Well, we'll start with our mirror equation. If I do, I die. And what we're looking for is the image distance. So I'm going to rearrange that to say 1 over di equals 1 over the focal length minus 1 over the object distance, which implies then that 1 over di is 1 over 0.12 minus 1 over 0.24, which implies then that 1 over the image distance is going to be about 4.17, that'd be inverse meters for our units, Therefore, if 1 over di is that, di, our image distance, must be 1 over that, which is 0 0.24 meters. All right, just a brief tutorial on mirrors. Hopefully that gets you a good start. If you need more help or are looking for more information, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks, everybody, and make it a great day.